In this module, what I want to do is to introduce you to the power of the nervous system. And one of the ways that we can recognize the power of the nervous system is to look at when the nervous system breaks down. And the story I want to tell you is, is, a, is a very um, deeply moving story about Jean-Dominique Bobby, a, who in his 40s was living a very cosmopolitan, uh, exciting life in Paris. He was the editor of Elle, which is at the time maybe still the leading uh, fashion magazine in France. And all of a sudden, one day, he became incapacitated. He was driving. He got confused. He had to stop. The um, ambulance, an ambulance was called. He was taken to the hospital. He was um, out of commission for, for several months, but after a couple months, he, he came to. And, but it was very difficult to recognize that he came to because, in fact, he couldn't move any muscle in his body. He was what we call locked in. He had locked in syndrome. And what he was unable to do was to express himself. And that shows you the power of, uh, uh, of the nervous system. It is the only way we have to be who we are. Luckily, in locked in syndrome, there is oftentimes one or, or a few muscles that are spared. These are the muscles of the eyes, in particular in Bobby, the muscle that allowed him to blink his eye was spared. This was recognized by his nurse, and he started to communicate by blinking his eye. How did he do that? Well, the nurse de derived a board that listed every letter in the alphabet in the order in which they are used in the French language. And the nurse would point to each letter, and when he got to the correct letter, Bobby would blink his eye. And in that way, Bobby blinked out the story that he was experiencing in his locked-in syndrome. This was published uh, in France as Le Scafandre et le Papillon, and it's it's uh, translated here uh, in America, as, or in English, as The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. Um, you can see it's a, it's a relatively short book, um, and one has sympathy for why that may be. This is a taxing process. And what the book talks about is um, it doesn't, it, first of all, there's no woe is me. There, there just isn't. The concern in the book is mostly around other people who have to make a long journey to visit him in the uh, distant hospital, rehab hospital, where, where he is staying, um, and memories of past good times, uh, memories of, about his children, memories of past relationships. Uh, so, so in his body, he's a diving bell, the iron diving bell, the, the, the uh, a, a very non-forgiving uh, vehicle by which people used to go into to the ocean, um, uh, unable to move, unable to express himself. And yet, in his mind, he's a butterfly. And he's completely unimpeded in, in, his, in his higher abstract functions. So what Bobby's story allows us to to recognize are four fundamental functions of the nervous system. And these are the four functions that we're going to focus on through this course. So the first one is perception. And for the, his perception, uh, his visual and olfactory perception were unimpaired, and we'll see exactly why that is. Um, but his uh, hearing, uh, he was deaf in one ear, he was deafened in one ear, and he had problems. He had um, uh, feelings of, of pins and needles, so uh, experiences the wrong type of uh, perception for not having any stimulus present. And we'll talk about why that happened. His major deficit was in action. He couldn't make voluntary movements. Now, I'm not talking about uh, the stomach or, or 
cardiac muscle beating your heart. I'm talking about volitional movements, movements that one intends to make. And he could not make those. He could not play Simon Says. He could not put his hand on his head. He could not point at something. He could not speak and he could not write. And this is the devastating piece of Locked In. And what we'll talk about is the motor hierarchy that leads from the motor cortex up in the cerebral, in the brain, down to the, to the motor neurons in the brain, stem, and spinal cord, um, and how that produces voluntary movements, which are then smoothed by the cerebellum and selected by the basal ganglia. So we'll talk about all of those elements to the, to the voluntary movement pathways. Then we'll talk a little bit about homeostasis, which is how we stay alive. In fact, every uh, organ in our body, it receives input from the nervous system. Without the nervous system, we don't stay alive. We don't think about it, it's unconscious, um, but, uh, but it happens and it's necessary. Okay, so we'll talk about how that works. We'll talk about things such as breathing and sleeping and, um, and regulating your, your heart rate and so on. And finally, there's abstract function. And abstract function is the thing, is the element of Bobby's life that is working spectacularly well. In fact, um, not only does he recount these very interesting stories, but he has humor. Um, at one point, he, he asks for his cashmere sweater. He says, if I'm going to drool, and drooling is part of not being able to control his mouth, so now saliva drips out, he says, if I'm going to drool, I want to be able to drool in my cashmere sweater. So he has a lovely sense of, of, um, of humor and, uh, and is, a, is a really compelling narrator for, um, for a life that's been well lived and is very interesting to follow. Unfortunately, Bobby died a couple days after uh, the book was published, um, but his legacy is, uh, is, um, live, lives on and, and we will talk about that a little bit in the final lecture.